No trip to my former home of San Francisco would be complete without returning to Harding Park. It's where I learned to play, and just last year it hosted a major on the PGA Tour. We caught Harding on a sunny and clear day, and we started on the back nine from the combo tees at about 6,600 yards. The Monterey cypress trees that line Harding Park are its defining feature, and I found that the course played every bit of 6,600 yards, and many good shots I hit today seem to come up a club short, including this approach on one. I hit a decent shot out of the bunker, and will be putting from the fringe here for par, but I'm forced to settle for bogey. This is my last round with my Mizuno irons. I'm kind of tired of coming up short, and opted to pick up some game improvement irons for the rest of the trip. And here on two, my approach was a bit short, but I get up and down for par. The third hole is another par five, and I thought I spanked this drive, but it only went about 225. And trying to get all out of my four wood here, I hooked it into the trees, and was lucky to have a clear shot to the green here. It ends up missing just a hair off the green. And my first putt is a bit aggressive, and will leave me about three feet coming back. And I fail to convert it. This was another drive I thought I hit well, but even on a 375 yard hole, I'm left with 160 in. And I hit this one well, but it will also leave me about 40 feet short of the hole. And that putt leaves me another 10 feet. And the greens are giving me fits through four. You'll see for the rest of the front nine, I'm swinging out of my shoes because I'm just worried that the ball isn't going anywhere. And on multiple occasions, it cost me some very, very bad shots. Including both of these attempted approaches on the fifth. I still don't find the green with this bunker shot, and this is actually a delicate downhiller for bogey. Right. And we'll walk away with a double here. Cool shot. That's a good rip with driver that might have gone close to 300 down the road at Lake Merced, but here at Harding I've still got 175 home. And grabbing a 190 club, I draw it just a bit left and off the green. That's a good chip that will give me a look at par here. But the greens continue to give me trouble. You might recognize this hole as the one that Morikawa drove before making eagle en route to his victory. But my drive finds its way right behind a cypress tree. That I managed to hit on my second. And I'll have the same yardage in on my third shot here. This one's hit well, and once again I'll have a look at four. But it breaks away from the water, and it's another bogey. That's a really lousy iron swing that will come up about two clubs short. And I opt to bump this one into the hill, and it's a good shot that will leave me about ten feet now for par. And finally I manage to make one. In 2005, Tiger Woods and John Daly played a playoff on this hole, and managed to fly their balls over the trees on the left. I opt for the human route, and this approach shot looks like it's painting the flag stick, but comes up just a bit short in the bunker. The bunkers didn't have a ton of sand in them, and I finally figured out how to play out of them by the ninth, which leads to a good par here. My driver was relatively steady on the front, but I didn't hit greens from some long approach numbers, and I didn't do myself any favors with the flat stick either. It adds up to 7 over through the front 9. That's certainly salvageable on the back 9. But before we get there, I wanted to show you a few shots from other rounds I've played on this California trip. This is the beautiful Half Moon Bay golf links, and you might recognize this famous hole at Pebble Beach. Please be sure to like and subscribe, Videos from all of these great courses are coming in the next few weeks, and I'd love for you to see them. The back nine starts with a good rip here, but I get up there to see that it goes all of 230, 
and I'm probably trying to hit this approach too hard, and I hit an inch behind the ball and miss into some greenside rough. That rough's pretty thick and probably Harding's best defense. And I don't get this one as close as I'd like. I thought I had this one, but it slid right past the hole. And I'll start the back with another bogey. That's a bit of a weak fade up the right. And from thick rough at about 160, I finally hit a good one. It pitches by the pin and rolls out about 40 feet past the hole. And believe it or not, this is only my second green and regulation so far today. And for the second time when I hit a green and reg, I wind up three putting for bogey. This is an uphill par 3, and I knew I hit this one well, but didn't know if the number would be alright. It is alright, about 25 feet short. And finally, it's a standard green and regulation to putt par. This is a fantastic dogleg left par 5, but this one is a bit towards the smother hook side, and I won't even have close to a look of getting there in 2 but I will be at about 130 with my approach here. And out of that rough, it's a high weak fade into the bunker. Like I said, I finally learned to play these bunkers that don't have a ton of sand in them. And I'll have a good look at par here, but it's low all the way and another bogey. That's probably my best drive of the day and leaves me in wedge distance, but I catch this one thin, and it rolls off the green to the right. But that's a good effort with a wedge from about 10 yards, and I tidy it up for par. This drives a bit astray, but I see a line here, and punching a 5-iron and keeping it low, it does get up to the green. And finally, we're settling in with some two-putt pars. That's a horrible smother hook, but I follow it up with a pretty good effort with a hybrid from the ref here. It lands on the front right of the green before rolling all the way to the back. And it's another two-putt par. The last par three of the day is pretty tricky. The wind's blowing, and I'm not quite sure how to play the number and I wind up fading it into a greenside bunker where I hit not a great shot that I'm lucky to get away with. And I'll get out with a bogey. This usually plays as the ninth hole at Harding, but it makes for a pretty good closing hole too. It's a par 5 with bunkers up the right, and I don't have the number to reach it in 2 today, but at least I'll have a wedge in. This one's all over the flagstick, and I'm eager to close the day with a birdie. But it's not quite meant to be, and I'll close with a par. My score is 83 today, for a differential of about 10, which I'm not disappointed with playing a course like Harding for the first time in many years. And you'll see that the back nine was quite a bit tidier than the front nine, which is a good momentum builder heading into some other tough courses around the Bay Area.